Say that much. I heard something and I don't like it. <laughs> oh my god, that's awful. Oh gosh. And it's like I've been sitting in this room for like 20 minutes. With the hand post class of 85 and friends. Welcome back to the Head Hug Class of 85 and Friends. I'm your host, Dave San Marco, along with, I, it appears we have <laughs> we have KQ, <laughs> KQ, the Avatar, and we have number 10 <laughs> from the Head Hug Class of 85 soccer <laughs> team, Stuart Mueller. How are you, Stuart? Uh, Dave, I'm great. I'm so happy to be on the show this evening. I am looking forward to this. I have been looking forward to this. I need you and your guests to convince me that there are UFOs. Okay, so I mean, this is a very, this should be very easy. No big deal. We're going to prove the existence of UFOs to Stuart. Okay. <laughs> it's going to be tough. That was my goal too, to make Stu a believer. <laughs> <laughs> well, shoot. So you, um, you, yeah. Uh, you've got work on your hands, which is great, but, uh, you know, let's bring everybody in. Let's Let's talk about what they've seen. Convince me there's someone else out there. I need I need to believe there's someone else out there. <laughs> Other than Merle, because you realize that Merle's out there. Merle is way out there. She's okay. way out there. <laughs> okay, let me... I was looking let for me, something a little closer to home. <laughs> let me tell Audrey that she's up. <laughs> Audrey. So, uh, Hanhood community, uh, good evening. And yes, it is not unusual for us to have to uh, text, to do tech support, to have to dial people in. Uh, mm -hmm. during the show, this is this is not all that unusual, but let, let me get Audrey. There's always bumps in the road, Dave. What's that? There's always bumps in the road, right? That's correct. Mm -hmm. All right, so there's always bumps in the road, but you know, we're together with family, the people that I consider family. So, um, I was just distant cousins, my wife, distant cousins, obviously. <laughs> yeah, and give, give me an idea, you know, like we'll have when I do my other show, you know, a, a couple dozen people in the chat. Um, the other night, Lou Elizondo, the A tip director, I, I, I guess sent you that narrative of Lou um, earlier mm -hmm. uh, that he wrote about the Pentagon's report that came out this week. Lou mm -hmm. came in the chat. I had three thousand people <laughs> that were watching wow. live when, when as soon as Lou came in the chat and said, "Hey guys, it's Lou Elizondo," and so I was like, "Oh my god!" But I'm going to tell you, I'm more nervous doing my hometown show than I am doing the UFO show. You've heard me say that before. It's true. So uh, what do you feel more comfortable talking about, Dave, uh, Bigfoot um, or or unidentified flying objects? What, what do you feel more comfortable in? Personally, I am comfortable in both. But if you were to ask my co-hosts on the UFO show, they would tell you UFOs 100 percent. But for mm -hmm. me, okay. I feel comfortable right. speaking about both. Yeah. OK, so see, I think that you can see Bigfoot only in certain areas, correct? It has to be. Heavily uh, wooded, I would assume, for them to feel comfortable. Well, well, it's interesting. You're not far from where they have had sightings, and the most recent mm -hmm. was uh, in Carmel uh, this oh, wow. winter. Some uh, recently, someone put up some tracks. So, uh, let's bring in Audrey. Is not Audrey has not come up. I just got off the phone with her like ten minutes ago, so I don't know why she's okay. not here. Uh, is she in a car somewhere, or is she actually home? Um, she's home. Oh yeah. Huh? <laughs> Still can't see me though, huh? No. Thank um, you. So yeah, you are turn, just a yeah. Mess. Just t turn the camera on and then hit virtual background, and it'll pop up. And I can put you backstage if you want, so you can do it. But so. did you see over here in the chat about Mark and Merle? No. Look There's... over in the private chat. 
Oh, okay. Moral can't hear us. I don't understand. We can all hear I, each other. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't know why she can't hear us. It could be her device. So that that'll be terrible. Mark, I think you're all backstage. Okay, is Mark? Let's see. Did Mark say anything? Yeah, Mark. Uh, we can't hear you. We didn't bring you up yet. But um, you're you're scheduled at. Let me see. Mark is second. He's coming up at eight twenty. So we need to get we need to get going on this one, or we're going to be late on every everybody. Um, so we have Merle. So hey, Merle, can you hear yes, us? Yes. How are you, love? <laughs> Merle, Merle, can you hear us? Merle, why yeah, don't you get it's... together with KQ and work together to fix out your issues? <laughs> yeah, KQ is blacked out and. <laughs> KQ uh, is officially an unidentified object in this uh, she is. little forum we have because I can't see her. <laughs> I, I, you can hear me, though, right? I can hear you. Yeah, we can't see you, though. You? I, see and you. that's but, fine. But how do I know this is you? You could have somebody impersonating you, an imposter I mean, person. I could hang a big curtain behind me so I could turn my uh, camera on. The The other thing isn't working, but I don't want to. I don't want to hold anybody up. We need to make. We are in the world of AI. Leaders, damn it! You may be you. You may be someone else. I don't know. <laughs> okay, Audrey is looking for the link to get in here. So, there she goes. Okay. All right. Uh, hopefully, Audrey's. She may be on the. Can you hear us, Merle? Uh, YouTube chat. Uh, let me see. Does anybody know sign language to talk to Merle? <laughs> uh, I. <laughs> okay, uh, Audie. I'll say Audie. I'm going to get a big sign. It says, hello, Merle. <laughs> the link. Oh, she's okay. gone. She's gone. She's gone. All right. Uh, Maybe this is see. the way that they don't want us to talk about them. Th this is it. Yeah. Here, the, do a believer. Because <laughs> I'm telling you, I had my, I had, uh, okay, my screen before. Nope. She can't hear us. Yeah, Merle. Um, make sure that you're connect. Oh, let me, let me get her in. She, Merle, if you can hear us, uh, make sure that you. You're muted. I can see that. Get yeah, she is me. muted. You mute. Test. She doesn't Merle, know what she's you... doing. Says here. Oh yeah, my god. I'm unmuting her mic, but she's has it overridden, so I can't. <laughs> so I'm I'm unmuting her mic. There's so. a bunch of old people who have absolutely no idea what we're doing on the computer. That's yeah. Where that's, are the kids? Yeah, it says I can't unmute you because you muted your mic, Mer uh, Merle. So you're gonna have to unmute your mic. I can't I can't do it for you. Hey, Danny O'Brien. Uh, hello, Facebook user. If you could type in the chat. Facebook user, who you are, you're saying what's the link? Uh, so tell me uh, what's the link is, and um, that way I'll know who you are and which link you're talking about. If you need to get in the studio, I can provide you a link. So just just tell me who you are. What new? Okay, I don't know. What, I don't know what that. <laughs> I think it it may not be somebody who's connected to to Hen Hood. So in anyway, meantime, uh, we're just slamming Merle in the private chat here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you really? Well, Stuart is. It's I'm... not undeserved. Let's be honest. Yeah. Yeah, Merle, I I can't uh, I can't unmute you if you're muted. That's the bottom line. So, um... can somebody get Merle a can with a string in it, and that way we can talk to her? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and Audrey, wait, is Audrey here? I think Audrey's down below. Let me bring her up. Oh, there she is. Okay. Can you hear? Oh, okay. Wait, she's not in a car. I'm not in the car. Oh my God, Audie! Hey! How are you? Hey! Hey! Can you hear us yet? I, I made it. I don't Yay! know. Hey! Oh my God, bro! Man, Audrey Audie has yes. finally yes. made it to making waves. Welcome. So, uh, <laughs> if those of you who are watching, that is Audrey Harris State School that is on the right of your screen. Your screen, <laughs> and Merle Chang Leong Mascaro that is on the left. Can you hear us, Merle? Good. Hey, Mick, we'll say something so we can hear you. <laughs> Everything's good. All right, love. Awesome. Can I get an amen? Sorry. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. So uh, let's get started with Audrey, and then we're going to go to Merle because we are we're about 10 minutes behind. Love, please, please, if you would. 
Hi. Hi. There you go. <laughs> wow, there she so, is. Yeah. So, oh, this is Montrose. This is uh, March. What's that date? Twenty fourth of nineteen eighty four. So, junior year, junior year high school. Let's hear it, my love. I love this. I love this narrative. <laughs> So uh, I don't even remember what we were doing. Um, it was evening, so it was March. So it must have been between 7 and 10 p.m. I'm not sure exactly what time. Um, our neighbor called, Mrs. Ackley, who lives behind us, and she didn't even really say anything. She just said, go outside on your front porch and look up. And so I think it was my dad that had answered the phone. So he just screamed for everybody to go outside on the front porch and look up. And um, it was m me, my mom, my dad, and my sister happened to be home on spring break from college. So she was there as well, my sister Tina. And we went outside and looked up and we saw this humongous object just hovering over our porch. Um, my dad estimated it to be about the size of two football fields. Wow. Uh, I'm not good with estimation. So he, he's the one that, you know, determined it. Um, and it was just hovering there it just stayed there and it made almost no sound there was just a tiny little humming sound like a mm, you know very very tiny sound wow. uh, which struck me odd because something that you know large you would think would make a lot of noise and it was just coasting it was just kind of hovering and coasting over our house and it had red uh white and green lights so we were seeing the underneath side of this thing uh, can i ask one can yeah. I ask one question? The shape. We're talking about the size two football fields. What shape do, are you looking at? It was a rounded triangular shape. So almost like a really wide boomerang shape. Yes. Like picture a boomerang, but very wide. Um, so it had rounded edges. And it was one solid object. Um, because there were so many lights underneath this thing, you could actually see the edge of the thing of the object. It, it, it appeared wow. to be silver, but it was so dark, you really couldn't tell. But the lights illuminated this thing. So you could actually see the edge of this thing in certain spots. Um, so it was definitely one object moving, like a solid object moving. Mm -hmm. uh, lots and lots of lights. And um, I just remember, you know, asking my dad, what is it? What is it? What is it? And he was just speechless and almost, frankly, like a little pale. He... He was in the Navy and he flew, uh, he was an aviation crewman. So he had flown on tons of military planes, you know, landed on aircraft carriers on the, on the ships and things. So he had a lot of experience with aircrafts. And at the time he was, uh, I think he was a sergeant at the time um, for Mount Kisco police. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we watched this thing for a couple minutes and then it just disappeared. And it, it was probably, I'm not good with estimation, but it was probably about 100 feet. It cleared the tree line, the tree canopy. Wow. So it, it it's appeared very low, but it was still, you know, clearing the trees. But it just oh, seemed wow. like it got off course or something. It, it Something that large doesn't seem like it should be, you know, that flying that low. And so when it disappeared, my dad ran in and called his police station, which Mount Kisco is about 30 minutes drive from Montrose. And they said it had just been over Mount Kisco and their switchboard was going crazy and they couldn't talk to him right now. So uh, he hung up with them. And um, a little while later, I called my friend Penny Thomas and told him. <laughs> Woo! PT. PT. I told her what we had seen and she said, oh, my gosh, we were just out on the Taconic State Parkway. She was with her parents and I believe her brother, Scott, and they were in the car on the Taconic State Parkway coming home from somewhere. And they saw this thing hovering over the Taconic State Parkway and everybody stopped on the parkway and got out of their cars and were looking up at this thing. So, you know, it wasn't just me and Penny. The, the, this was seen by like three, 4,000 people that night in the Hudson Valley area. Hmm. I, I took the hand on logo off because I didn't want to cover Stu's face. We know that how, you know, the, the, the female contingent <laughs> that, 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 that watch this show don't wouldn't would be very upset. Uh, so go ahead with questions, KQ and, and Stuart, and then we'll go to Merle. Well, I guess Dave, I the question I'm going first, Stu. Hold on. Yes, yes. Uh, ladies, <laughs> sorry. First. Ladies, he said first, my lady. name first. I thought we we're going to start at the top and work our way down, but that's okay. <laughs> well, clearly we're out of order. Um, I love you guys. So, Dave, the one that the 
the incident that Audrey is talking about, is this one of the ones that that is documented in um, the, the works that you've read? Yes, uh, actually, Audrey can speak to that. I spoke to the author today who told me, say hi to Audrey. So go ahead, Audrey. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I actually met Linda Zimmerman. Um, I, did, I don't know what year it was. It was probably, my son was about 10 or 11, so it must have been 2012, 2013. He was really into UFOs at the time. And so uh, she was speaking in Danbury at the library. So I brought Kyle to this little lecture that Linda was doing. And, um, you know, I was just there as an observer. And of course, she asked the audience at the end, you know, has anyone witnessed it? And I raised my hand and I told her, you know, what I had seen. And then she asked me to stay after the lecture and pulled me into a side room and interviewed me. And then I told her, you know, my family had seen this and uh, she wanted to speak to my father. So she did. She called my father. And um, I had also learned that my niece, who lives up near Stormville, her father was the air traffic controller. And oddly, he never saw one while he was working, but they were in their backyard in a pool in Stormville and they witnessed one. So they also wow. interviewed my cousin, my uh, niece, Nicole, as well. So I, I may be in this book. I don't know. I need to buy this book to find out. <laughs> Oh, I'm sure you are. I mean, I can, I could, I could text her and ask her. She was having a migraine today, which is why oh. she was going to be a surprise guest. Linda was going to join us, oh. uh, but but yeah, she's having a migraine today, and she has to do her show tomorrow along with something else. So she yeah. she wanted to just kind of be in a dark room and you know do that thing. So uh, one love to Linda. She's the one, real. She was a scientist uh, at one. I don't know if it was IBM. Uh, prior to um, uh, getting into UFOs uh, and becoming fascinated, she had a sighting across the river from us in Rockland County that changed her life. Uh, out by a lake one night, she was with a guy, uh, and and they saw one, and it changed her life. And she um, she decided to dedicate uh, to leave science and and study UF and write about UFOs. So yeah, um, I saw her on a documentary. I contacted a guy I knew who was on the documentary and I said, man, I would love to meet Linda Zimmerman and he hooked it up. So it was good stuff. So anyway, uh, uh, could you have a question, Stu, please go ahead, sir. Uh, a, a question and, and, a, and a statement. Um, so the question already, when this um, object sort of disappeared, did it, did it leave like move in a certain direction or did it just disappear? It just disappeared and you okay. know, it was flying horizontally and mm -hmm. just, all of a sudden it was above us and then it wasn't, it just, it was gone. just gone. And uh, something that large, we just still can't believe something that large didn't make any sounds. I mean, mm -hmm. even today, a drone, a tiny drone makes a loud noise. Yeah. Right. And, um, you know, there were some, um, reports of these pilots that were flying Cessna planes, hoax, hoaxers, I guess you would call them. Yeah. I saw that. I read that. Yeah. They were flying in tight formation after mm -hmm sightings and you know my dad was like absolutely not this was one solid object and we saw the rim of this thing you know we could see the edge of this thing it was one solid object and it moved and um you know he he knew that a Cessna a, a ton of Cessna planes even one would make a lot a very loud noise mm -hmm. and made virtually almost no noise and moved as one solid object so there were times when people did see these Cessna pilots flying in flight uh, you know, tight formation, mm -hmm. uh, but people that had seen both could tell the difference. They said, oh, this is definitely airplanes. And then the other one was, we don't know what that was. Yeah. So. I tell people, was, I'm sorry. Dad. I'm sorry. No, you go ahead, sir. You go no, ahead. No, I just, my, I think with the lights for me is that I, I just, I'm just curious as to why, let's just say that it was something from another universe or another planet that they have green and red lights. Like, <laughs> Is that universal? Are lights, green and red lights? Does everybody have them? Do they somehow figure out a way to put red and green and white lights on to some sort of object? And it's just not humans that do that. It just kind of, it's kind of weird for me to think that everybody in the universe has green and red lights. Do with me or trying to debunk. <laughs> you, know, you know, one of the interesting things about that, Stu, uh, because some of you guys know that uh, you know I had a career in the Air Force as an aviator so I'm very very familiar with aviation lights and in fact we studied you know the different types of lights that would be on the airplane and the different lumens and that 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 were required of anti-collision lights versus nav lights versus landing lights versus mm -hmm. position lights versus 
taxi lights. So there's a lot of different lights that are on an airplane. And what's interesting is one of the one or two UFO videos that I've seen that are legitimate. I'm thinking of, I, I guess I'm thinking of one other than my own sighting myself, which was very similar in lighting to what, to what uh, Audrey saw. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. it was, but, but after the fact, you know, now um, the lights are different. They're really, they're really quite different. It's very, very odd to say that, but the lights don't illuminate the same way. Um, I'm trying to think of one I saw. And I'm, I'll, as far as all of you that are on the show tonight, there's one video that I think is legitimate that's out there that was put out in like 2013. I will find that video and I will get it to all of you. And you could see a guy and he's like in his car and he bails out of the car because the car, he sees this UFO and he wants to get away from it. So he leaves the car and the way that it, the way that it lights up the car looks very different from a light that I would be familiar, a spot like, like you would see from a helicopter and say, oh, okay, I understand what that light is. This light was very, very strange. So I'm with you. And, and I don't know the answer to that question, Stu, but let me let Merle get in there and then we got to bring on, uh, cause I think what I'm going to do Merle is keep you on as co-host if I can, oh, uh, well. or whichever one of you wants to co-host and then have... <laughs> hello. Hello. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Well, that doesn't do a lot for our confidence. Does it Stu? <laughs> no, I, I, I love, we love co-hosts. Go, go ahead, my friend. It's all for the good of the show. KQ. Yes. Do you have a question for Audrey? She would if she could. Yes, you. Hey, Merle. Well, you know what, Audrey? I So I was just kind of re-looking. I was online last night, and your name does come up. It does? <laughs> yeah, I didn't look. I didn't plug in your name. I was looking up something, and I saw your name come up under the UFO sightings. Wow. So I would suggest Ooh. maybe further that. I didn't know if it had something to do with uh, Dave, if he put something in, like with our names, putting this piece together. Or it could be the Linda Zimmerman book. I'm not sure. She's probably in that book. I read the book that was a predecessor to Linda's book, The Night Siege, by Dr. J. Allen Hynek. Um, so I have not read Linda's book, but I will ask her which one Audrey's in, and then I'll buy that book. So <laughs> Hold on. I'm, so. I'm reading it right now. It says... Uh... Uh, local crackpot, Audrey Hara, uh, claimed to be a UFO. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I'll Written tell you what. By Stuart <laughs> we got to increase Stuart's pay for the show. It's <laughs> wonderful. Um, Audrey, so uh, I think we got to let you, let me see if Mark Lamash is on here. We got to get Mark. Mark, um, I don't know if we're going to get Mark because he's obviously not connected. I'm going to let you guys, I'm going to go on mute. I'm going to call Mark real quick and uh, see if, if, if you guys want to have some dialogue, please do. <laughs> oh, no pressure whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's good to see you, Audrey. I haven't seen you in such a long time. No, likewise. Good to see you. You too. Everybody Marley, I see you all the time. So, you know. Come on. There's so KQ. I, I want to see KQ. Oh, it, it's yeah. I, I'm a, I'm a hot mess over here. Well, I, I shouldn't say that. My the room is a hot mess. I just I can't figure it out. Mm -hmm. I can't figure out how to get my virtual background. I can I can get it to work on my computer. So I'm on my phone. I I, I yeah. I'm on my phone. Yeah, I couldn't get it to work on my uh, PC. So well, I will tell you. As oh, much as a skeptic that I am about, yeah, I'm sorry, Kiki. As much as a skeptic that I am about UFOs, I do love staring at the stars. I really do. Um, you know, you sit in your backyard and you look up. And do you guys ever see like the satellites when they go across? No. Starlink. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I see. I see the satellites all the time, and it's like amazing stuff. And uh, so I'm fascinated by the whole thing. I'd love to see something. I just, uh, I just haven't seen something yet. So even the shooting yeah. star, it's just. Yeah, yeah. I Jill saw uh, Jill saw uh, Starlink and and called me and um. There we go. Okay, now we should be able to get Mark in. I think he reconnected, or did he? 
Where is he? I don't know what happened. Did he okay. bring dinner? <laughs> <laughs> okay. There was two marks, and now I have no mark. So I don't, I don't know what happened there. Well, he just wrote uh, in the private chat that he's here. No, he's yeah, but he's I. He, there was two of him, so I removed one, and now there's none. So Maybe I don't know where one. he went. Hmm. Yeah, just like there was two merles, and I removed one merle, so we're left with a merle. <laughs> okay, I don't know. All right. Uh, actually, no, that merle is still here. We have two merles. So anyway, um. <laughs> I, I want to say I everyone is really missing it because uh, KQ looks gorgeous tonight, and I'm, I'm sorry that <laughs> you guys didn't get to see her. Stuart and I did, so she looked like Rapunzel. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we have to okay. that long, but again, I'm trying to hide a lot of things. But that is just so cruel, uh, Stuart, and unusual. Is Rapunzel uh, a bad thing to say? I, I don't know. Was that meant to be mean? I didn't take it that way. No, I mean, Rapunzel's got long hair. You've got really long hair. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I, I've seen photos of Rapunzel. I'd prefer KQ. But anyway, um, Audrey, uh, <laughs> yeah. thank you so very much uh, for joining us. This has been a long time coming. Um, uh, you look amazing, too. And hopefully, <laughs> so two things. Um, will you, uh, so August 9th weekend for our get-together. If you're not in a car, dropping someone off at college, <laughs> um, driving somebody somewhere, we would love to see you. Well, uh, my kid's in Italy, so I couldn't I, – in a car. He's in Italy right now. <laughs> oh, so this is great. We just – all we need to do to get to see is to get one of your kids to go internationally. Yeah. It shouldn't be that hard. There's got to be an exchange program somewhere. Um, and then if you would uh, also uh, – we'd love to have you come back and co-host on here, like for another episode. Oh. I know how many. How long has it taken? How many episodes has it taken to get Audrey on camera? No, I, I was I, from my car when I was dropping. Yeah, from calling car. from the car doesn't count. Because <laughs> you're like, oh, gotta go at a red light. Up, oh, there's a cop. Gotta go. <laughs> no, I was. I was parked in his. I was outside his dorm in the parking lot. Uh, your your classmates are so tough on you, Audrey. They're not. They're not going to take it easy on you like I am. Nothing you know but I mean? love. Oh, <laughs> nothing but love. Tough love. Tough love. So uh, thank you so much, Audrey. Love you. And thank talk you, to Audrey. Soon. Thank you. Cheers, darling. Bye bye. So is Audrey leaving now? She is because we Bye-bye. only have 10 spots in the studio. Oh, OK. Yeah, she can come back if she wants. I just got to make sure we ha- we we have 10 spaces. We got to get Mark and Lisa on. Yeah. So uh, right now, Mark is not here. Okay. So I don't know. I don't know what happened. I'm going to have to call him again, but I'm going to bring Lisa up. Were you wanting, let me see how many we got total right now. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have it. We have two Merle's for a total of eight. (laughs) Two Merle's doppelganger. Um, (laughs) All right. Let me call. (laughs) What's that? You have Merle. Have you seen something? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, really? yeah she, we're going to pair her up with Sean later on because um, because of the, the delays and stuff in getting Audie up. So no, let, me, let me try Mark one more time. <laughs> Merle, are you wearing a Sailor Pride button? That's awesome. Yeah, I was. Oh, I, oh I, you rock, I, man. Audrey for cheerleading. Yes, <laughs> I, I still have mine somewhere. <laughs> I just happened to find it. I was trying to find the article. Um, about the UFOs. I have no idea where I put it. Mm. So I found that. There you go. Once a sailor, always a sailor. That's, oh. that's sweet. Is Dave on the phone with somebody? Is that what's going on? Is he <laughs> muted? He has muted him. I think, yeah. no, he's trying. I think he's trying to connect Mark. Okay. So should we do like a Brady Bunch thing since the way we're laid out right now? <laughs> Mara, what does Sue feel about UFOs? So my mom saw um, on the way home from Valhalla Medical, well, it's Westchester Medical Center. She was mm-hmm. working late, and uh, she had seen it the night or two nights before I saw it. And um, she was coming home, and she saw the lights up in the sky, and she was looking at it. And then she got over the bridge by the Croton Harmon train station, and people were pulled over to the side of the road. Mm. So she pulled over, and they all stood there watching it. Wow. Mm -hmm. And 
she totally believes that it was a UFO. Did, can, did she describe it to you? She did, but um, I don't remember. You know, okay. like, details except that she told us about it and at the time it was like yeah right you know that mm -hmm. kind of response yep. but i think so this was in july and it was in the summer and i don't know if i was like <laughs> i think it was 1986 because i think uh -huh. i was either on my way out or on my way in and it was like probably i don't know it was in it was i maybe around nine i can't honestly remember but the kids were out in the back parking lot because I lived in Patricia Gardens. And I honestly think like Lisa Pappas, Michelle Pappas, like those kids. Well, they were kids back then. Now they're mm -hmm. um, We were all standing there and they, my mom called me and she goes, that's what I saw. And I thought what Audrey said about the planes or the pilots flying like a bunch of planes flying around. I just remember mm -hmm. something about that. And then somebody thought it was just security over the Indian point mm -hmm. thing, stuff like that. But it was just kind of hovering over the parking lot. And mm -hmm. I don't remember the light colors, but I do remember the lights. But what I definitely remember is that it was still, it wasn't moving like a plane. It's just still. And it mm -hmm. was doing that humming sound like mm, really very quiet humming and um that's all i really remember and then it came out in the paper that people were seeing it all over the hudson valley and it was considered um like i think the government was getting involved like it was an actual ufo sighting all over the hudson valley and I think too, it was going up along the river mm -hmm. and it, that's really what all I remember to tell you the truth. My mom remembers more because she just was so like, I told you it was a UFO. Like, and I'm like, mm -hmm. I still can't believe that that's what it was, but it was, I feel like the lights, what I saw went almost in a, a long, like a, Audrey, do you remember it kind of meeting in a V at all, like a small V and then kind of coming out? It was just covered with lights. We saw the underside of it. So we were looking up at it. So um, it was just a ton of lights on the underneath of this thing. And it was so illuminated that you could actually see the edge of this thing. Um, so that's how we knew it was like a... Maybe it was lower with you because I don't remember seeing that I just remember seeing lights and thinking these definitely aren't planes because it's right. still right. It's one solid object. And, you know, my dad having flown on planes and been in the Navy, he was much more of an expert than I was, but he, he said that was definitely not ultralight or Cessna planes and, mm -hmm. you know, something that large, but it, I mean, it, it cleared the tree canopy, but it, it was still flying incredibly low for something that large. Mm -hmm. So uh, welcome. You are listening to Making Ways with the Hen Hood, Class of 85, and Friends. I'm the host, Dave San Marco, along with my co-host, KQ, Stu, Audrey Harris State School, and Meryl Mascaro was just telling of her event. So you saw one and your mom saw one, or are you just relaying? We saw, we, my mom saw it like two days before we all saw it. Wow. Yeah, and so, man, so the date... So we weren't able to get this guy on, and I hope he shows up because he has a link to the show, but his name is David Carbone. I, I, I don't know if anyone knows David or if he's just related to, like, uh, Steve Carbone and the Verplank Carbone, so I'm not sure which of the three towns, but he was filming the St. Patrick's Day Parade today. Um, he does a lot of that, and I was like, man, um, he did a, a wonderful symposium that I shared with uh, my co-hosts uh, on this, and he talked about June something, 1984. I don't know if it was June 16, June 20, something like that was the Indian Point episode. So that, or the reason I brought that up is that could have been the one that Merle uh, saw or that her mom saw, you know, because mm -hmm. it came up the river. Obviously, it had at some point it's going to be over the river if it's hovering over Indian Point. It's basically on the river, the plant is. So um, does that date resonate with you, Merle, or like June? No? I feel like it was... 
in July. Like it was July. summertime okay. because the at the time, the, you know, like Lisa was in high school and her sister was younger than her. Like we had a bunch of those, like the Brancas. I feel like they were all hanging out and I feel, feel like it was summertime. I think I was in college and I was either going out or coming in, but it was night. And they call, They were all standing there looking up. And then I kind of came up and I'm like, what are you guys looking at? And my mom's like, you wow. see, that's what I saw. That's what I saw, <laughs> the UFO. And everyone's kind of like, she's nuts. And But the only thing I can tell you is we didn't know what it was because it was just staying still and it had that low sound. And maybe if it was around Indian Point in June, that could have been why. Maybe I heard someone say that because I felt like someone was saying, oh, maybe it's security for Indian Point, but I'm, but we were like, but it's not moving. It's not a plane. And then that would be a lot of planes. I just remember, you know, that in the conversation, I don't know. I don't know if that was like the Washburns live next door to me. And if her dad said that. You, you, you know, what's interesting, Merle, is that it, when you see it, you just know in a lot of cases and you just knew, you know, obviously, Audrey, to a degree, just knew, and her father was able to confirm that being a professional law enforcement officer. So I felt the same way, and I didn't know anything about aviation other than I loved it as a kid and been flying a couple times. And when I saw mine, I had no doubt about what I'm seeing. You're just like, this is not something that's prosaic. Um, I'll tell you what, we're going to bring on Lisa Liardi to try to stay on, on topic. And then in the backstage, we have Paul Davis. Uh, Paul Davis... Uh, I believe he's from Peak Skill, but boy, he could describe Verplank like he knows it like the back of his hand. And his uncle was a, a football coach at Hen Hud in the 70s. So I got to speak with Paul the other day, and he had a sighting uh, where it was flying right up the river as well. But he was in Peak Skill, picture on Main Street, but facing the direction of the firehouse, that facing, you know, uphill towards Peak Skill High School. And he had a, one of his sightings, I believe he's had. At least two, uh, maybe three, but um, but yeah, he was with a group of guys. Some, some, yes, ma'am. This was on UFO Files on TV too. Ooh, Merle is bringing that heat, baby. When you um, so uh, quick question, quick question, never mind. Uh, on TV. Okay. So did, did anybody take any pictures? Sightings. Merle, so, or did you guys take any pictures? Uh, anybody think about taking some pictures? My sister did run and get the camera. She did try. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have cell phones back then, and she just oh, went yeah. up, but nothing came out. Nothing came okay. out. It's not meant to be photographed, man. It's one of these really weird things. I mean, there are people that have video of them, but in very specific circumstances and atmosphere conditions, it's really weird like that. And a lot of times you're having what they call ontological shock, and you're yeah. not thinking about, I want to get a camera. You're like, you know, Merle's sighting may have been, what, seconds, right? Merle, not minutes, right? It was definitely seconds. And I don't honestly recall ever talking about UFOs at that time. So, like, that was far from my thought that that's what it was. You know, my mom was also in the military, so I don't know if that's why she's like, that's a UFO. And I'm like, you know, I didn't believe it really was, but I didn't know what it was wasn't anything familiar to us it's it it there's it's so amazing um it's bringing back memories now and and my sighting was not prolific at all compared to what you guys saw but uh anyway uh if you're watching this please give us a like and a subscribe this will be out on podcast tomorrow but if you could subscribe to us on on youtube give us a like that would be awesome and now we want to introduce one of the coolest girls from the hen hug class of 84 put your hands together for lisa liardi really? Woo! Well the coolest girls really <laughs> oh yeah you were on my bus man yeah you were i mean i was gonna say one of the hottest but you know i i don't want to reveal all of my crushes from hen hug that are that are oh, on, because sweet. they're all of them come on the show and then you know i just don't want to <laughs> revisit it every so I'm jumping into class of 85 right here. You are. Right? What's up? Right. She's senior class, man. So What's have up, some guys? respect. 
<laughs> have some respect. How are you? I'm, I'm really good. I'm really happy to see you guys. And as somebody said before, I'm not sure which one of you ladies said it's Sailor for Life. Sailor that was for me. Life. When you can't um, say. Yes. And I'm listening to you guys. And I just, um, it was in the summertime. And Dave, you just said, when you see it, you know. Now, Stu, I can't convince you of this. But I, can <laughs> I want somebody to convince me. I need somebody to convince me. I can tell you that what I've seen was um, what I saw. You know, somebody can say, you may have never seen an MRI machine in your life. But you've heard about MRI machines. You walk in, there's people saying, this is an MRI machine. Um mm -hmm. So your human brain recognizes this would be the MRI machine. You know, this is like a type of thing where you're, it's not in the Rolodex up here. Like it doesn't register, you know, there's no, you can flip through volumes up here of things you've known in your human brain and it's, it's not in there. You know, that's the only way I can describe what happened to me. And um, I probably saw, the same thing that you guys saw because i listened to the the whole conversation you're having here and i was on the bear mountain parkway it was probably 84 85 and i was getting on the parkway right where Cortland lane's bowling alley is and i saw this thing and i pulled over right at the beginning of the parkway I pulled over and I got out of my car. I was alone. I physically got out of the car. Nobody else was stopping. And I looked at this thing and whatever you were talking about, Dave, that shock thing, Entourage I don't know what shock. happened to me, but I just stood there. I stood there like doing, you know, your brain is not really registering what's happening. And um, I remember I, it was, it was kind of far away. And I, when I, when I came back to the earth, um, I said, well, I probably shouldn't drive fucking towards it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I got in the car and I turned the car. There's a turn off of there to get back on to 202. And I went back towards my house off Ernestock road because I was like, I'm, I can't drive towards this thing. And I, I don't even know if I talked to anybody about it, but I know that I let it go. Like, I was like, okay, I saw this weird thing. It's like, if you saw a ghost, you kind of, mm -hmm. well, I don't know if you guys have seen a ghost, but it's kind of this thing where you're not really going to, you know, you don't, what are you going to do? Am I going to call the police, you know, and say, Hey, I just saw a UFO, you know, what are they going to do? Are you in danger? Not really. Um, so I forgot about it for years. 10, 15 years later, Saturday afternoon, half asleep, half awake on the couch, watching some UFO show that you guys just yeah. mentioned. <laughs> I, I was like, was I don't know if it was UFO hunters, UFO files, whatever. And they said, Verplank, New York. And all of a sudden I was like, <laughs> I saw that one. <laughs> and, um, I, I listened to the episode and they were interviewing some security guard from Indian point that said he saw this thing, but he didn't want to be identified. I think if I'm recalling properly. And um, all he said was that there was some issue with the plant that night that either the plant was not working properly or the spaceship shut the plant down or so something happened and they were talking about it and I actually tried to research the episode to hear it again. And I don't know if I couldn't find it. I don't know if we had on demand or whatever at that time. Um, but I haven't really thought about it, researched it, looked into it since that time. Um, but I know it was summertime and I know what I saw was not natural to my existence. So, let me let me throw a couple things here in here. First of all, I'm gonna say, Lisa contextualized that beautifully. What ontological shock is basically it's the ontolo ontology, sort of like uh, the metaphysics that deals with the nature of being. So it's what your framework is. 
and when you see a big people that have seen Bigfoot goes, I'm going through my Rolodex and I don't have a Rolodex for this thing. I'm seeing something that is not supposed to exist. So is such as the same for UFOs. And a lot of people are affected by that. They're just frozen, especially the first time. Sometimes, you know, with Bigfoot, when people see it, you know, multiple times, they go on a lot of expeditions, they're not as freaked out, you know. And But with UFOs, um, it you know, generally you're only going to see it once. And that one time, it just depends on, on if you're ready to see something like that. Most of us are not. Um, the other thing uh, I want to say, uh, Lisa, is that... Um, you know, this this is something that, you know, I'm glad that you're not having trouble dealing with it because a lot of people you can see you have multiple friends here, and we have more friends. Uh, we're going to get Sean Blakely on here later. He's going to talk about his. And when Paul comes back, it looks like Paul uh, probably took a restroom break. When he comes back, I'm going to get him on. I don't know. Mark was not able to. What it looked like is um, you have to allow your phone um, it's going to ask you if StreamYard can use your mic and your camera. And if you don't um, authorize it, then it won't allow it. But let me bring on Paul because I know I told him 840 and we're six minutes past that. So let, let me see if we can. If and we Dave, can I don't want to interrupt screen. you, but I'm probably going to leave you guys okay. early anyway because I have an early call in the morning. But Okay. Uh, I can see Paul fine. I don't know why we're not seeing him on screen. He's all, all black right there, this whole screen. Lisa, um, boy, thank you so much then for contributing to this conversation. I thought you couched it beautifully. Uh, before Paul tells his narrative, does anybody have any quick hitters for Lisa before we, well, before she organizes a South Carolina meetup for me and some of her <laughs> classmates? Go ahead, Lisa. Yes. Because she's three You're hours. You're all invited. Late. You could all come. I'll cook for you. It'll be great. <laughs> or I said we could do. invite Mark and he could cook for all of us. Yeah. <laughs> I, so any questions for Lisa before she goes? I have one. Lisa, what, what shape was yours? Was yours the round object or was it more of a triangular? I don't know because I don't like where I was on the parkway and where it was. I was too, I was not close enough to it to see a shape. I just knew it wasn't a star. It wasn't a plane. It was something else Stu. it was something else i don't know what it was i can't tell you if there's ufos or not but i know it was it's, damn, it was weird it was just a weird experience it was a weird experience it, it's not even really a worthy subject of debate because it's so i mean now we've had you know from the two fighter pilots from the nimitz we've had david grush the intelligence official come forward as a whistleblower and swear before Congress, and he had he has a whole slew of congressmen that have interviewed him in a skiff, which is like a secure government environment. It kind of looks like a bank vault where you have uh, classified conversations. You have Lou Elizondo. I I referenced him earlier. He was on our show. I've had a CIA officer on my show and a CIA Foreign Service operative. So um, there's just it. It's not a debate whether it exists. Like so if somebody wants to have that debate. You can have that debate, you know, on your own because it's there's legislation from 21, 22 and 23 and uh, the government, you know, legislators don't write legislation for things that they think is going to make them look like an idiot. They have to have really, really good intelligence on that before you have bipartisan groups from Congress that are going to put their name to legislation that, that deals with this. So whether it exists, that's not the question. The question is. Why are they coming here and what do they want? That's the question. You know, Dude, that's, that's your job. Or where are they from? For the next podcast, or find all that from? out. <laughs> okay. So, Lisa, uh, any, any other questions for Lisa before we say uh, goodbye to our, uh, our homie, our senior upperclassman from Class of 84? <laughs> I, when, I have a question. Um, how, because Audrey, you were saying yours had just cleared the trees. Lisa, was yours like how high was that? Was it up as high as a plane or or it was lower than a plane? It was it was lower than a plane, but high enough where if I'm on one side of the parkway and it's let's say around 
Peekskill area, like past that Locust Avenue exit, mm -hmm. that I could see it. Like I could see those lights, you know. Um, but I just nighttime or daytime. It was nighttime. Oh, I, it okay. It wasn't so like late sense. nighttime. It was like early, early night or late evening. I want to say because it was Twilight. kind of like. Twilight. Sunset a little after sunset, maybe. But I just, um, it was crazy. It was Paul is spirit. back. Oh, Paul is back. I don't back. read books about it. I don't research it. I'm sorry, Dave. I don't watch no, all these you podcasts did, you about did, it. Dude, you did fantastic. Yeah, but, I know, fantastic. but I know what I saw. I know what I saw, and I know I'm not that crazy. Okay, that. <laughs> <laughs> Not you're as crazy as everybody from Hen Hud, right? So you're normal. Yeah. Thank yeah. you very much, love. Uh, we are going to say hello to Paul Smith. Thank, Thank you, Lisa. you. Thank you, Lisa. We love you. Bye, Class guys. Of 84. Have a great night. It was Have really good to see all you guys. And we'll be talking to you soon. Nice. South Carolina meetup. Paul up. Davis. Yeah. Paul Davis. I'm sorry. Paul Davis. Sorry. All right. <laughs> Paul Davis. <laughs> right. How are you, sir? How you doing, Dave? I am doing yeah, great. Yeah, that's... Um, um, Go ahead. Go ahead. You first. Oh, I was going to ask. Um, so you 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 were able to describe Verplank like the back of your hand, but you're are you oh yeah. Peak skill? Did you go to Peak Skill? Yes. Well, originally from Mohegan Lake, but all my family are from Verplank. Okay, that's why. Eichlers, all the Eichlers. Anybody know them? The Eichlers. You got to. That was my old stomping ground. I grew up down at the point. Yeah, I was from Mahegan Lake, but we were down to point all the time. Every one of them, every one of my family were in the uh, Burt Plank Fire Department. Wow. You Duke have Eichler, accent, Charlie sure. Eichler, Dave Eichler, Dave is Doc. He was assistant assistant coach at Hen Hud for a while. Yeah, if we had one of the Burt Plank folks on the show, it just turns out that you have uh, one guy from Buchanan, a girl from Montrose. Wow. A girl from Peekskill, a girl from Kruger's, and I'm from out in the Furnace Woods area. So uh, forgive us that we don't know him. But if we had one of the pointers on, for sure, they would. If we had Joe Kaz on, he def, Joe Kaz and Dino would, would definitely. We've got the whole so. district covered, though. Yeah, basically we do. I'm 61. I'm I'm 61 years old. I don't know how old some of you are. 56 and 57. Ah, no comment. Huh? <laughs> yeah, you're close. You're, you're you're the upperclassman here. Yeah. Uh, so what's that? Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I wouldn't say upperclass. <laughs> um, Paul, tell us about your experience. I got to hear it the other day, but my co-hosts have not. Paul Davis from uh, Peekskill. Well, there was a bunch of us sitting on a. Um, Dr. Hales uh, had an apartment up over his office on Main Street, right across from the bank up from McDonald's. And there was a bunch of us out there, all family members, probably about 10 of us. And first we spotted it over top of Con Ed. It was over top of Indian Point. And you could see helicopters or whatever it was flying back and forth from Camp Smith to it and back or like three, four times. And then that stopped. Then it started moving, going up toward Main, up Main Street. Uh, between Main Street and 202, and you can plainly see it, you know, not see it, but the lights on the bottom are like a dull white, but they were very, I don't know, if you would say bright, but they were big, big and white. You couldn't see the object, but you couldn't see through it. Like you look up at the stars, you couldn't see the stars behind on the other side. So I would know it was an object. It was V-shaped. It was big. It was probably about four football fields, you know, long. It was big. It had like five lights down each side, one in the middle and the front. Wow. So after it got out of sight a little bit, we all jumped in the car and followed it for a little while. We caught sight of it again, and it was just going too too fast for us to catch up with. And later on, my uncle, my uncle Levi, the same night, him and a bunch of other people, it was a couple of police officers there too that spotted it over the golf course because he worked there and he lived there at the golf course. So that was it for that sighting. Yeah, and I, I read about in, in Dr. Hynek's book that the Peekskill Police Department, uh, somebody called the, um, you know, the desk and they said, uh, I think it was one of the police chief 
called the desk to see what was going on because he either saw it or heard or, or people were saying, oh, my God. And the desk is like, it's happening again, Chief. Our phone, we can't even get, you know, the phone is just ringing off the hook. We yeah, a lot of so, calls. So it, yeah, it's it's been, you know, a couple of these. And you guys collectively may have seen the same one or different ones because there are different. There were all of them were, to my knowledge, were V-shaped triangles. Yeah, it was V-shaped. There was no other lights but the white ones on the bottom of it. They were on the very bottom, like facing down. They were bright, but they weren't bright to the eye. You know what I'm saying? There was no beams, but it was just like a bright white light. That was it. It didn't illuminate nothing or, you know, shine on the ground or anything. They were really weird. And there was no noise from it whatsoever. Uh, Paul, you and your friends said to each other what? Well, it was all family. We all told you see that? Check that out. Look at it. We all jumped in the car and started started following it. You know, we <laughs> followed it. We followed it as far as we could. Then it just went out of sight. And it was heading toward Yorktown. That's where it was going. So my uncle seen it at the golf course. You know? Interesting. Interesting. So if well, it was and, going toward oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, KQ. I was just gonna say, Paul, what it's Karen. Hi. Uh what year was this? Hello. Uh, this was, I believe, 82, between 82, 83. I don't remember exactly when it was, but that was about the time it was between 82 and 83. Because uh, I was at a certain period of my life. You know what I'm saying? It's how I remember that. Right. I just want to say real quick, I believe mine was also 82, 83. It was the month or so before I left Hen Hud, moved to Florida right in the beginning of freshman year so um just to let you know and also, was yours so, boomerang shape too i saw it from the rear from the back aspect so i couldn't see a shape uh, you see lights see, though right yeah oh yes you That's did see lights. My eye. yes yeah what it down each side of the v right i don't remember that i remember um, so where I lived in uh, Peekskill, I lived up on Furnace Woods Road. So you right, can imagine there, there's no street lights uh, per se. There's not the sky is not very lit up over there. Okay, um, so when this object I saw it up overhead, um, it was so lit up. That's what caught my eye, and you're just like, oh my god, that's got to be a UFO. There'd be nothing else flying that low. <laughs> Over that, <laughs> you know, on a Sunday night or something or whatever night it was, it was a Saturday or Sunday. I don't remember, but um, I thought it was a Sunday night, and so it was just that's that's what I saw. I mean, my again, my my sighting was not uh, particularly prolific compared to a lot of you because I didn't see it for long enough because the tree line prevented me from following it with my eyeballs. And yeah. it, what's interesting is Lisa was dr saying, let me drive away from it. Let me get away from it. And you're driving <laughs> it with your family. Yeah, some people think that, yeah, I don't want to be near it. <laughs> All right, let's let uh, Audrey, Stu, and, and Merle, if they have a question for yeah. you about this, because you have another sighting as well. Yeah. So, well, I wanted to add, mine was like a, a like you were just driving, like, I guess a boomerang, right? Like this? Yeah, the V-shape, an yeah. open V-shape, not like, you know. Yeah, I saw <clears> the, <throat> the way you describe it is how I remembered it. I don't remember, like, all different colored lights. I remember it was, like, I thought, like, very dull white lights. Yeah, yep. And uh, it was there was no noise. I didn't hear anything from it. And if it, they said it was a bunch of ultralights, if it was ultralights, you would have heard them because it was low enough to that point where, you know, you could have even a plane, anything. Ultralights are loud. They're not that quiet. Even if they put silencers on, you could still hear them. But what I seen, you couldn't see through it to see the stars on the other side. So it was there, you know. Mm hmm. <clears throat> yeah, the, the photo, so we didn't get David Carbone tonight. He showed a photo. I don't know if it came from the guards at Indian Point. The other thing I wanted to add that I forgot to add when, when Lisa was on, and I wanted to say is there were, uh, David documents, there were 20 guards that made reports uh, from that, and it was hanging over the re reactor for about 20 minutes. Oh, we finally got Lamash in. My <laughs> goodness. Ah, oh, you made it, Mark. God hey, bless you. Son? Um, in but he's having trouble okay 
So and now he's got to he's got to unmute himself. I can't unmute him. Um, and oh, and we just lost Mark. Oh. Okay. Can I ask um, one other question? Yes, please. Yes, please. Mark. And, and I don't know. I it's just this same question that I keep asking. How high? How high was this? I'd say maybe a thousand feet, maybe. Maybe a little bit more or a little bit less, okay. but it was it wasn't that high. It wasn't that high. So now Dave, and, the and, ones that have been reported, are they all, you know, I, I just say that's like, you know, where birds can be. Have have any been reported that are like even higher than that or I mean, the ones that I've heard in the Hudson Valley are relatively low, but the way that you could figure that out is almost like with a transit. Like you see them with, when, when they're uh, framing out a road and they have a transit. So from where, for example, where Paul was sitting, if I set up a transit and I would just angle up, angle up, angle up mm -hmm. until I have a sight line that goes above all the buildings, and then I would figure out w how high that would be above sea level. Or, hey, there's Sean Blakely uh, above the uh, the level of the water in the river. And then you could figure out, a, you know, at least a minimum altitude from there. Because at, at a certain altitude, uh, as you know, having been to like the Peak Skill Inn, you know, if you were below that level, well, then Paul wouldn't have been able to see it. So mm -hmm. it would have had to have been high enough uh, for his sight line to be able to see it above the buildings and so forth that would that would block you, you know, that which is on like Division Street and, you know, all those those streets in, in downtown Peekskill. So anyway, but it's a great it's a great question, KQ, but they don't sound like they're particularly high up. And the mm -hmm. one that um, the one that uh, David Carbone used in his presentation, it was blocking out the sun. I mean, it looked like an eclipse from the bottom of it. That that's that's what it looked like. You can't barely see the skin. It's very very bright underneath the craft. Uh, it's daytime, and it uh, it looks like it's blocking out the sun. So if you have a look at that YouTube I sent you, you you'll get to see it. It's in there. Um, okay. So uh, let me see. So Mark was here and then gone. Sean is here, and then we can so we can bring on. I don't want to crash this thing, but let me try to bring you on, Sean, and see what happens. Hey, there he is. The class of 86 is on. Yeah. Football player, wrestler, football coach at Hen Hud, and legend, Sean Blakely, my teammate. Hey, Sean. What's up, Q? How are you? I'm good. Dude, Audrey. Sean, how are you, buddy? Hanging in there. I I tried to log on from my computer, but it wouldn't go, so I'm on my cell phone. So everything's like really small. <laughs> yeah, you sound great. You look great. So it's working. Uh, right. If you're connected to your Wi-Fi, it's going to work. So uh, we have uh, Paul Davis on here. His he's from Peekskill. His family uh, are the Eichlers from Verplank, uh, and boy, he has the accent for sure. So I'm I know all... he's connected to the point. <laughs> go ahead. I'm sorry, Sean. I'm related to the Eichlers. So... There you go. <laughs> oh, but you guys are kinfolk. <laughs> yeah. Paul, did you hear that? No? Yeah, yeah. I, I know I know most of the Blakeleys. I don't I don't know you. What side of the Blakeleys are you on? Freddie, you know Freddie Blakely? Yeah, they're my um, cousin. We were always concerned. Oh, they are okay, okay. Fred Fred Blakely's a good friend of mine. Yeah, Freddie. Yeah. And there's yeah. uh the the two, the two other brothers. Who are the two other brothers? No, not Fred. Um, Albert sons. Oh, Craig. Albert. In, uh, Albert. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I know them very well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so how you Hang doing, right? Hanging in there yourself. That's good. Uh, same thing. <laughs> same yeah. thing. It's like a All little right. pointer reunion. And we are. We're yeah. having a pointer. Yeah, this is great. Uh, but but Paul had another sighting that he wanted to tell us about. I wanted to get him to share that. And then uh, we'll we'll make room for uh, Mark if he can if he can get in here. Hopefully he's he's cooking up an appetizer for us. Go ahead, Paul. <laughs> tell us about that next sighting. What do you want me to tell you? What happened over the lake? Yeah, that's the, the other right. sighting that I had. Yes. Um, it wasn't lake far. Picture. It wasn't far off from the first time I'd seen it. It was probably a couple weeks, maybe a month down the road. Being a bunch of friends, we're up in Lake Peekskill. 
And uh, they were at a friend's house. I didn't know who their friend was, but they went inside the house for a little bit. And I was out in the car and I just happened to look to the left, the left, left out the driver's door window. And I seen something coming up over the hill. It was like over the mountain. I seen the lights, um, same thing, V formation, all the lights on the bottom of it. And what caught my eyes, the reflection off the lake. So I looked at the lake, the reflection off the lake. When I looked back up, it was banking a little bit. And that's all I can remember from the whole night. I don't remember anything else. It was all blur. That's it. That's all I remember about the second time. sighting. That's, that's nerve wracking because I don't know what happened. I really don't. Missing time. Missing time. Kind of makes you wonder, huh? It, it, loss totally. of time. Let's I get a think couple it's more than a loss it's, of time. It could be. I mean, it, it, <laughs> it, it happens. I'm People, kidding, huh? It, no, it happens. I'm, I'm I know dead that serious. I don't remember anything Wait. after seeing that. I, I want to tell you this for, for comfort. Um, and this is going to sound yoga-ish. I'm a yoga teacher. Go figure. This is a safe space. And I have interviewed a number of different um, experiencers of abduction and uh, ones where uh, in home invasion, if you want to call it that. So um, some, you know, home invasion, but not abduction, some abduction, but not home invasion. So um, I I'm not uh, bristling at anything you say. Yeah, no, so I'm not ahead, worried everybody. about anybody knowing about it. You know, yeah. it was it was a long time ago. I don't care who knows about it, but I've never talked about it with anyone. You know, nobody. Uh, maybe a couple people that's about it but thank you for sharing with us let's let's go around the horn let's um i mean i kq we got to give you the first one go ahead buddy <laughs> <laughs> what well, um just following up to what you just said why do you why do you think you've never spoke to anybody or very few people about that just because of how you would think that they I would react no, no, not really that. It's just like after the first sighting, not to seem anybody didn't, nobody seemed to talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Like it didn't happen, you know, which I found kind of weird. Um, After the second time I seen it, I never really talked about it either. You know, it's like kind of not put it out, always thought about it, told a couple people about it. But you know how people get, they look at you weird and think you're nuts or something, you know. Right. Right. But, right. That would be still. That would be me. Yeah. <laughs> Stu, do, do you have Stu are not yeah. believer. As far as talking about it, I don't care. So, Paul, let me ask you: When you <laughs> said that you saw the you saw the object, you saw it bank, you were in your car, and then you said you don't remember anything after that. So, did you wake up or regain consciousness or something hours later, minutes later? I I don't remember. I don't remember anything after that that night, and e even the next day, really. You know what I'm saying? It was like a blur, and I was straight as an arrow. I wasn't drinking at the time or nothing, you know, because I was going bad. through some problems. No. You know, but you yeah, I, I don't want to get into detail about it. Well, did you notice What's anything that? physical? Did you did you did you see if there's anything no, physically different? No. Not really physical, not anything different. Just a, just a, the memory. I don't remember anything from that night. And I, you know, I got a pretty decent memory. I can remember a lot of things. I don't remember anything that night. You know, I know I went up there with a bunch of people. I don't remember leaving with them. You know what I'm saying? That's oh, the thing. Did your friends mention that you looked or behaved differently after this happened? No, no. Yeah, I don't even remember what I thought of the next day. I don't remember. Okay. I I have heard narratives where that's, that's if, weird. I, I yeah, after that after that happened. I'm sorry. I was gonna say I have heard narratives where there were purported interactions with ETs and the memory is wiped of those events. And if you guys watch that uh, video I sent you uh, from Staff Sergeant Dan Sherman from the Air Force in that book called Way Above Black. Uh, his mother was abducted twice, but she has no memory of it. Um, and then that's how they determined they wanted to use him as an intuitive communicator with ETs is because uh, his mother was abducted once, the second time he was in the womb when it happened. So uh, once in 60 and once in 63. So anyway, uh, I don't wanna get bogged down in, in, in Dan Sherman. Let, let's get Audrey in there. 
and uh, Merle and Sean if they have a question before we let us let Paul go. Anything, Audrey? Next. <laughs> I feel like I'm on trial here. <laughs> no, 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 I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, if nobody has a question, anyone have a question for Paul? No. All right. Um, Paul, we're going to get uh, Mark Lamash on here. Chef Mark Lamash from Class of 85. Oh, it looks like he disappeared again. Um, All right. Dave, say stay in touch with me. I will, man. Yeah, if you have anything. Stay in touch in case I see something else. You never know. <laughs> you saw two in, in a lifetime. is amazing. Thank you so much yeah. for taking your time. Yes, thanks for coming on, Paul. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm afraid what's going to happen the third time I might not come back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you guys. All right, thanks. Everybody have a good night. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. Andrew. Bye-bye. All right. Great job. Let's see if we can get uh, Chef Mark Lamash on here. Well, what are we doing with Sean? Uh, yeah. Oh, and Sean. Well, we have Sean's closing the show. But uh, ah. we got to see if we can get the – he's the closer. Um, wow. Just think of like a lawyer, you know, that comes in, you know, at the end. Um, the Johnny <laughs> Cochran. Sean, no of, pressure okay, whatsoever. I, yeah. I probably got the most boring story at all. <laughs> I'm sure you no do. Pressure. Yeah, right. All right. <laughs> we, we'll let you uh, know. It uh, looks like Mark <laughs> – Mark is here and then gone. I mean, you'd think Chef Mark Lamash would have fat. He would have internet like that's as fast as instant grits. Um, but, but anyway, uh, Audrey, if you haven't seen it, I can send you this stuff. But basically, uh, and I sent this to one of my friends. Uh, his name is Sean Munger. He's from the boss. Uh, he's from Framingham, I think, in, in the Boston area. He's a former Marine Corps intel. And now he is a lawyer for the government, um, really bright guy, and very much a disclosure advocate. He has written and published articles on the topic. Um, he's connected with some pretty big people in this UFO disclosure movement. So I sent him that video that I sent to Stuart and KQ about, and any of you here, I will send it to you. I may have sent it to Merle as well, actually. Okay. Uh, Staff Sergeant Dan Sherman he penned a 59-page book called Way Above Black that talks about how um, when he was in the Air Force, he was a cop, and he got cross-trained into Intel, and they sent him to Elint School, which is electronic intelligence. That is a black program. And what uh, – oh, my goodness, my cat is here again. Oh, there's little Hera. Hello, Hera. Say <laughs> hi to everybody. She likes to crawl on the computer when I'm doing stuff. Um, so, so, um, Staff Sergeant, uh, Dan Sherman, uh, was read into this program and he got pulled in a room and they pulled him into what they called a gray program. The black program, Elint, was the umbrella. The gray program was underneath there that had to do with ETs and they basically said, we want to train you as an intuitive communicator to communicate with ETs. And by the way, your mother was abducted, uh, twice and you were enhanced and of course his mind is blown and all that but he already had a tssci uh sbi clearance which means tssci with polygraph and so forth which is like a a step above you know the clearance that i had um and he got read into this program and eventually did communicate uh with ets and that uh represents a step further than what i believed uh, because I did not believe that the government uh, had had any sort of communication or agreement with any non-human intelligence. I didn't. When people said that maybe Eisenhower made it, I said I don't believe it. You talking five-star general? Nah, you know, not happening. I, I don't believe it. Former president. Well, now I uh, not only did David Grush say that when he came out with his whistleblower complaint. And the intelligence community inspector general called his his disclosures urgent and credible and that Congress should speak with him. And then, of course, he testified before Congress under oath. So with that and then in an um, how do I describe this person? I guess I could call him an intelligence official sent me this 60 page book way above black. With no commentary, he sent it to me. Uh, so I, 
if this guy sends me something, I take it very seriously because he doesn't send me anything that's BS. So I read the 60 page book when I came back from Jill's house. You guys remember I went and saw you guys up there and got to hang out with Stuart and watch football and party. And I had gotten the book the day that I arrived at Jill's house uh, via email. And I started to read it in between our little events that we were having. And I was like, I, I can't I can't even I can't even read this right now. So I waited till I got home. I read it and it just blew my mind. So um, so anyway, um, apparently there is been some sort of maybe abduction protocol that it was authorized. And when Dan Sherman found out that that was the case, he basically said, I want out of this program. And they said, you can't get out. And he said, well, I want out of the Air Force. And they said, well, you can't get out of that, which, of course, is BS. You can't get out of the Air Force. So what did he do? He went to mental health and said, um, you know, whatever he said to mental health. And, and then the next thing you know, they cut off all communication, took away his clearance, and he was, you know, he was out of the program and then out of the Air Force. So anybody here who wants to see it, <laughs> I will crazy. send you both the interview with him. And this is, you know, dated material and the the book and i'll also send you the book it's available on goodreads for about seven bucks but i can send you a pdf if you like sean's like yeah send it to me dave <laughs> <laughs> so any <laughs> right. i will send it to you sean so <laughs> yeah okay all right um go ahead and uh let's go ahead and go ahead with your narrative and then uh i'll try to get my cat out of the room before she interrupts the show <laughs> Oh me? Yes, sir. Yeah, you. You're, yeah. Yep. You are up, sir. I mean, I mean up, there's moment. Audrey. No, we're gonna put him up there we go. on stage. Oh. Yeah, it was uh I don't know, probably April, May of eighty five and uh you know, my house. I'm I'm less probably less than a mile from Indian Point as a crow flies. And I just was probably I don't know, around nine at night, ten at night maybe. And um I was on the telephone, those old, you know, the old uh, stretchy cords. So he just made it to where I could get outside my door and I'm just in my backyard. And, I'm, and I just, I just see this big triangle all lit up coming. Really wasn't very high. I mean, I wouldn't even say it was, it was probably maybe four or 500 feet high and um, real slow, quiet from Indian Point over my house, kind of over, over uh, toward the high school and that where I lost sight of it. That's pretty much it. What kind of lights did this have? Yeah, I don't recall. What the... shape was that boomerang? What's that? What shape was it? Did... Oh yeah, it was it was a triangle shape. Um, yeah. triangle and um, you know, the lights were, if I remember correctly, just just plain old white. You know, and. Uh, Again, it wasn't, I mean, it was moving really slow and it was, it was solid because it was a really clear night out. You could see the, you know, you kind of see the shape of it and, uh, and just kind of as it went just from any point in my house and kind of right over the high school. And any of your neighbors see anything? No, like I said, this was probably nine, 10 at night. I mean, as far as I know, all my neighbors, you know, I, I was the only, really the only kid on my street. I mean, Danny Markham was maybe, you know, 15 houses up, and he was the only, really the only other kid on my street. So everybody. Is... <laughs> Nine o'clock bedtime. Uh, yeah. Can you imagine, though, like a, a, a UFO flying over Hen Hud? Like, that photo would be the greatest <laughs> photo in the history of our town. If yeah. you could be like, like, um, maybe kind of like at the at the gallon measure or something, and taking a photo, a, a photo, you know, maybe a little further up, you know, just to where you could see it uh, hovering above the uh, flying over the high school. That would just be nuts. Yeah, yeah. But I didn't hear anything as far as early on. But hey, I I've been trying to look for it. The the uh, the radio communications between North Castle PD and Yorktown PD when they were actually when they were it. it it was, I mean, around the same time period, but they were yes. following 
iconic and, and you can hear all the radio transmission but I, I i i don't seem to be able to find them anymore yeah i i totally remember that i've heard that and i've seen that and it's pretty wild let's i think we can get mark back in here now mark hey mark hello <laughs> we fought man it only took an hour I know it only took like downloading three different, uh, you know, browsers. <laughs> Mark, did you bring dinner? No, it's down the stairs. Uh, you're talking about flying saucers. I got some, uh, you know, unidentified uh, flying pizzas ready for the oven. Now. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, anyway, first of all, does anyone else have any any questions for Sean? Sean, that that sighting, you were on the phone with Orselino. Um, mm -hmm. First of all, we should say that. Right? Wait, I think we should all assume that. No, he told me that. I've okay. heard the story. I, I assumed it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, uh, yeah, you know, you want to get away from everybody when you're on the phone. You know, especially you're on your phone with your sweetheart. You know, you don't, you don't want to be, uh, you don't want your parents listening in on what you're saying. Uh, <laughs> what your plans are. So that's that's totally that's awesome, great. man. Um, and obviously, it, you know. People would say, oh, well, you know, I saw something. Why isn't my, you know, sighting as, you know, as uh, uh, maybe as real as Sean's? And, of course, they're all real. But, unfortunately, you know, uh, we do put value. You know, uh, Sean was a career law enforcement officer. And that, unfortunately, that, that does mean something. Um, and those are the, the ones that get the attention of lawmakers and, and so forth. Uh, if, if, if that's fair or not fair, it doesn't matter. It's just, it's the way it is, you know, and it kind of can step up from there. Then it can go to, oh, well, it was the person in the military. Well, it was a person, an aviator. Did they see it flying? What rank were they? Were they, a, were they a captain or were they a lieutenant colonel or a colonel? You know, so it can go, you know, it just so happened that David Fravor fit the bill. As, and Mark knows this entire story. Mark can tell you all about the Nimitz incident. But... You had a lieutenant uh, commander, uh, which is no five. You had um, the um, lo the uh, youngest uh, air wing commander in the United States Navy, former uh, Marine Corps enlisted, who then got a shot to go to Annapolis, graduated in Annapolis, and became a an aviator. So David Fravor fits like all kinds of and and then went to Top Gun and graduated from Top Gun. So you know, like unfortunately that lends a lot of credibility to his sighting, just like, you know, Sean, in this context, it, it does mean a lot. So thank you so much for sharing that, Sean. Mm -hmm. I have one more question for Sean. Please. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I have to do it. Um, so the lights <laughs> that you saw on this, were they as bright as that yellow shirt you're wearing? <laughs> oh! <laughs> Sean came on here for attention. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've been, I've been, I think Dave's invited me maybe, I want to say four, three, four times, and I, I haven't been able to make any of them. So, and I was actually, I, I spent the weekend with my grandkids, and I just, I mean, I flew home from uh, from um, Pine Bush where they live. So that's about an hour away, and it's in where it's, it's snowing pretty heavy. So uh, I, I, I risked life and limb just to be here just for this one. So I didn't have to blow off another one. Well, <laughs> wait, Sean. We're Pine Bush is where the UFO uh, sympo the UFO conference is every June. So, is that so? yes, Linda Zimmerman, the aforementioned, <laughs> uh, in June. I don't remember. It might be June six, but yeah, there's a UFO conference every every year in Pine Bush. So, yeah, are you going? There you go. No, um, because I'm trying to dial back. You know, doing too much travel, it gets it can get it gets really expensive. So I'm coming home in August. I'm gonna do. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then leave Sunday. So I'm going to, you know, we're going to have fun. And, and obviously I did a winter trip this year and I also have my college reunion. I do one with my college teammates from Dean. This in October. So those are the two trips that I'm going to do. Um, so, but yeah, I would love to go to the UFO conference there and meet um, Gail, the Bigfoot lady from up there, who's an investigator. And, and obviously Linda, I would love to meet Linda in person. So Linda Zimmerman. So, um, and Pine Sean, Bush is only like a half an hour from me. Is it really? Yeah. Sounds. They have nice, a really man. good golf course too. <laughs> well, hey, yeah. I, have, I, don't know. I can pick up my. I can pick up the sweets that I'm going to order for uh, Easter uh, next. My next trip up there, Q. Oh yeah, yep. 
Another subject. We'll talk about that. That's right. We never followed up on that. Oh, yeah. there's Mark. I'm waiting. Oh. Up. Hey. Up. <laughs> Sean, you just got. That's now you're a little like the rest oh. of us. No, Sean. I mean, Sean, because if Sean, if, if you guys have questions for Sean, uh, you know, he's here. But I figure, you know what? Why don't we? Why don't we talk to Mark about about his sighting for the last Before thirty seconds? Him again. <laughs> okay. No, I mean we're we're you know we're well past we we planned on doing about an hour and ten minutes and and we're well past that so, um but we had fun so Mark tell tell us about about your sighting. It was in the eighties. I think it was like March. Uh, I I don't remember the, the exact year. I think it was eighty three. Uh, I was at. I was at the A and P as a kid working there, and I was waiting for uh, uh, it, my shift was over, and I was walking across the parking lot, and I noticed uh, something weird going over Tinselite. You know, I was heading to the gas station to wait for my ride to go see my mom in Putnam Valley at the time, and um, and I think uh, I know Fred Sala was working at the gas station then, and um, I think. Uh, what was his first name? Baisley? Mike. Mike Baisley. Mm. Big guy at the time anyway. And um, and uh, maybe Mike Guzzi, if I'm not mistaken. I, I don't recall exactly, but those, they would, uh, you know, they would appear and disappear in different, uh, you know, days. And uh, that day, it was like three guys hanging out there. And as I'm walking across the parking lot, like I said, I see this. It appears to be massive, but it's it's after dusk, and I can't, you know, I'm not positive, and you're trying to uh, reconcile, like, oh, it's a blimp, it's this, it's that, and I recall hearing stories about the guys in the um, from Stormville when the, um, the ultralight planes. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, you know, it's probably that, but uh, I noticed that there wasn't any sound, and that you know it was massive with uh, lights too. Um, that I thought were kind of weird, you know, they were like uh, subdued, if you will. Um, but not, nonetheless, I, I, w I walked over to cross the street there and I uh, got to the gas station. I was waiting for my ride and we're all looking at this thing um, going like creepingly slow. And uh, I just figured it was just uh, like I said, ultralight planes. And when it would pass that the sound would catch up. Right. You know, cause sound, you know, at a distance is like a delay it to it. And, um, it 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 went over a highway, <laughs> and what it did is uh, there was no sound that caught up for one thing. So that was like the first thing that went off in my head. I was like, okay, that's weird. And then the second thing is like with normal aircraft, you know, you got to kind of do an arc when you when you make a maneuver and you start to turn. This thing just stopped, <laughs> did a lateral movement, and then started going up the highway, sorta. And by that time, I'm like, what the hell is this thing? And also at that time that uh, people at the gas station stopped pumping gas, people on the highway, the overpass, you know, near the bypass diner stopped going in. Everybody, wherever the hell they were, stopped and started looking at this thing. And I'm still trying to rationalize it. I'm like, well, it's probably a, you know, a blimp or some kind of aircraft until it did that maneuver. And then I was like, I don't know what that is. And by that time, my, my stepfather got there and picked me up to go home to my mom's house for the weekend in uh, Putnam Valley, Lake Peekskill, New York. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're on the extension heading back towards like Peekskill to get to uh, Ansville Circle. Mm -hmm. And this thing is going and I, we're watching it. <laughs> you know, the, the only person that wasn't watching was my stepfather driving, but we're, I'm watching this and it, it's kind of going over parallel in between uh, the, the highway, I guess, and, um, and the river. And at some point, we get across the uh, Bear Mountain Extension, the little bridge going to the circle over there near Ansel. Mm -hmm. And this thing is kind of going towards Rohook, I guess, thereabouts. Um, and then it just exponentially just sped up and whoop, it's gone. And I'm like, I don't know what the hell that is, man. Um, and I kind of, I never told anybody about it. I don't even, uh, I don't know. I never told my mom about it. I don't think I told anybody about, anybody about it until uh, actually, I think you, Dave. And um, it was just bizarre. And then the next day you hear about like all these uh, witnesses that uh, that couldn't be disputed. You know, like uh, you had police officers, uh, judges, nurses, you know, credible uh, witnesses. And um, some people are trying to say it was Stormville guys with, you know, really uh, uh, resonators to keep the sound down. Yeah, right. 
Mm -hmm. uh, that was not the case. And um, and then there was can people. I uh, right. Can I speak to that real quick? So yeah. When when you talk about an ultralight, you're talking about like a two cylinder Rotax engine. They wow. use these in uh, snowmobiles. They use them in jet skis. Um, and for the purposes of horsepower, there's a significant interest in not modifying them too much to so as to interfere with the reliability because it is an aircraft and if the engine quits working you could die so uh ultralights are not quiet uh they have a very particular sound uh and we all know what that sound is and that's how we know <coughs> that this is uh that this was done uh because um the government officials wanted people to be able to find a prosaic explanation um, for, but Mark already talked about how airplanes turn. They make an arc. There's a way we ailerons on wings or how aircraft start to, to turn. Um, I have seen, um, I had someone, an investigator, a MUFON investigator from Virginia, send me a video and ask me to evaluate whether I thought it was an aircraft or something that was anomalous. And it, if you can see my finger here, it kind of, first of all, there was a bunch of lights that kind of lit up in a formation and they would just slowly blink out. And now there's no lights. And then one would light up and then the other. And then one of them went, went like this and made a J hook maneuver and came back. The speed that it did that would have been like an F-22 and afterburner, but you couldn't make that rate of turn and turn around and return to base, so to speak. Uh, at this point in the sky as it did. I mean, so there are certain things that are anomalous, and Mark recognized when it just all of a sudden shifted. You know, it made a 90-degree maneuver, uh, and we don't have craft that can fly at right angles like that. So, nope. I, I, but, those were the tip-offs. No sound. And then, like I said, until I was like, well, okay, the sound will catch up. But it was creeping slow, and it, was going, it seemed like its trajectory was coming from uh, Indian Point over tinselite kind of like you know on a diagonal and then that at that time on welcher avenue there was an a and p which i worked to like i said as a kid and it was the gas station and then the overpass and all that jazz and this thing was just creeping along and so like it just rung the uh the zeppelin bell i was like i don't know why it would be here that you know probable you know why would it be here but you know your brain tries to put a you know you know a tangible realistic uh you know picture to it and um and like the sound thing was another one it was silent and i and i couldn't see the whole thing <laughs> that was another creeper i was like wow this thing she all i could see like the the be beginning like a uh, chevron-esque kind of like shape mm -hmm. to it and the lights people talk about the lights all the time but the the immenseness of this thing kind of overshadowed me like staring at lights i recognized in my head that there were lights I, you know, uh, kind of subdued and not very aircrafty, I have, I must say. And um, and just the speed, it, it was like it was just soaking it all up, going for a little cruise there really slow, like like didn't care what was watching or looking. And that to me, that screamed also, you know, that humans would do that, you know, like in, in a, uh, you know, in some kind of aircraft, you know, if they have no worry about being, uh, you know, seen or no one cares, you know, kind of thing. And then. It was just lumbering along until uh, it just stopped, went over a little bit, turned, and went up the highway. Kind of did like a J hook, you know, or like a little. What do you call that? Uh, it it sounds like they made a ninety degree maneuver, like a just kind of like it just is going like this and just a shift, and then yeah, it was. And that's what that's what's really weird. That's what sounds like what you were saying. So. Yeah, and I want to have you guys talked to any of those like Freddie Salos or uh, I don't know. I I'm not. To. I don't know who's still around or who's doing what, but um, uh, uh, who are the other guys that were there? I think it was Goosey, Goosey, Baisley, and somebody else, or uh, one of those, one of the crew that used to hang out there all the time. Well, Fred Sala was one of our classmates, right? He was in. Yeah, yeah. Because you and I were in Mrs. Schaefer's class, obviously as ninth graders, <clears throat> yeah. but then I think we were in Lavallee's class as well, right? Were you I, I wasn't Lavallee's? in Lavallee's, no. No? Okay, so by senior year, you were out of that program. Okay. I don't know where the hell I was, but I don't think I was in Lavallee's. I know I, <laughs> I was. I was a. What? What? Where did Pappas go in the twelfth year? I don't know. I don't. 
I don't know. Uh, I don't recall. Maybe you were in her class. Maybe that's mm -hmm. why. I'm pretty sure I was. I was right behind the clock. <laughs> yeah, and I, I was in I was in Lavalley's class, so maybe it was just you were in her class and I was in his class. I, could be I think we shared like one class in in her in her uh, English. That sounds maybe. right because I, I remember Mrs. Pappas. No, no question about I it. I just remember getting reprimanded not to uh, break into <laughs> the closet all the time. <laughs> You were so funny, man. A great, great classmate and probably a great teammate of Sean's, I'm sure. Um, good time. But um, now the other thing was, too, like uh, the day after it was happening, because you know, I was a nerd. I used to watch all the uh, like this, back then when it actually had programming like Discovery Channel, when you could discover mm -hmm. things, you know, other than, uh, you know, real life drama. Um, they used to talk about Delta Wings and they would talk about Avro cars and, you know, all that stuff. And, um, People are trying to pigeonhole like those things onto this, yeah. and uh, you know the price of a you know a hammer was like four hundred thousand dollars. You know, so five dollars went to the hammer, and the other you know went to like Black Ops and uh, Skunk Works and Special pr Propulsion and stuff like that, where they made a conventional uh, bomber, and then they made one that had uh, anti-gravitics uh, in it supposedly. And yeah, so at sure. that time, I didn't know any of that stuff, but I just thought, well, maybe it was an advanced blimp of something, or you know. Or, or you know some kind of thing like that i never went i didn't ever went my brain wouldn't accept ufo <laughs> you know and, you know because i you know i'm a son of an engineer so i was just like all right let's run down the list what you know what could it be that makes sense you know so there's a certain safety Let, let's get everybody everybody back in the screen so everybody can see everybody else oh first of all does anybody have if anyone does oh. any, i'm sorry go ahead. <laughs> sorry to, no i'm sorry to interrupt please it's so nice to see everyone, but I have okay, to. Love. I have to get up really early for work. <laughs> thank you, Merle. We're gonna. Thank you. It you. Nice it... to see you at the next chat. Take care. Right. Good night, Merle. Good night, guys. Good night, babe. Now I got to figure out how to get out of here. <laughs> oh, Kick just out, leave babe. studio. All right. Leave bye. Studio. Bye, bye, Mark. Love. Nice to hear bye. the story. Bye. Take care. Sorry. Bye, Last bye, 30 seconds, Bye. Bye. Oh, she's gone. Now if. If you can see in the comments, Dave, over here, Mark, yep. once you started talking, whoever this Facebook user is, mm -hmm. he's saying he was working there. Oh, I guess at okay. the gas station. And then did also mention that um, Fred passed away. That Fred passed away. Oh, okay. Wow. Fred that. passed away because I, I looked that up. Fred passed away in 2008. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. But I, I don't will, know who this I'll... Facebook user is. Facebook user, say your name. Yeah. See, just like a man, no one listens to me. Yeah, no, I just, I'm just gonna send that message. Thank you, KQ. You're, you're uh, such a treasure. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll have to get to speak with that person. But I just want to say that this is ongoing, in terms of people trying to find, make a prosaic explanation. But like, I'm gonna have a guy on next month. Uh, that these are these undersea submersible objects are now they're seeing um that's what I read recently actually today 500 knots underwater um and they're transmedium so they can fly through the air they can go into the water and move at 500 knots so those aren't something that we can prosaically explain but th people really want to believe this and the reason that they want to believe it is because if we can explain what it is we can feel safe. If there's something out there <clears throat> that we can't account for, that really bothers people. And so that's that's untenable to a lot of people. To me, it's okay to not know. I don't know what it is. I don't know where it's from. I don't know what it wants. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm not going to live my life worrying about it because all I can do is is, is act accordingly, uh, according to my beliefs. I can't, I can't change what is. So... Um, I don't believe one of, we figured one of, the, one of the last things that Hynek saw before he uh, died in 88, right? I don't know. I, I'm not sure what, what, what he saw. I know he saw a lot of things that he felt bad that he didn't say before those. Uh, I don't remember. I the, looked uh, them up and it, they said that he was in the Hudson Valley checking it oh, out. He was here. Yeah, yeah, he was here. Yeah, he absolutely came and interviewed guards at Indian Point. He took yeah. them to Mario's too on, uh, on um, Washington Street. So yeah. and ate dinner and because they wouldn't let him get in the plant and interview him there. So as he, he got them out of the plant and interviewed him in a restaurant. 
But anyway, uh, you know what? We can do a we can do a whole another episode on this. The the whole purpose, because I got to go as well. The the, the <laughs> reason for doing this was we thought it'd be a fun subject. Uh, a lot of people had experiences like Mark and Merle and Sean and Audrey and 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 others that 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 didn't come on tonight. But we have others uh, in our high school, and I just wanted to get everybody together so we could relaunch the show around something that was really easy to just tell about something that you saw. Right. Mm -hmm. So let's get some parting shots from everybody. We'll say goodbye and hopefully uh, we'll get another one of these done in about a month. Hmm. That's so good. Let's start with, uh, let's start with uh, Mark and then we'll go to uh, Sean, Audrey, KQ and Stu and then myself. I was oh, glad so you I left. Got on here. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, the techni technical uh, stuff here, but I finally got on there. But I would love <laughs> to talk more about it uh, at some point. Um, it was something uh, from my past that I, I just thought it was something that I did. I didn't understand what it was, and so I just put it on the back burner. And um, it's it's interesting, like to find out that it was it was a landslide. Uh, moment that a lot of people saw in New York, and it really put the kibosh on a lot of uh, swamp gas. Exactly. Yeah. And so. he, he's making reference to Gerald Ford had constituents in Michigan that reported, I mean, some amazing UFO sighting uh, that that a lot of people had. And basically, uh, I think the I don't know if it was uh, O.J. Allen Hynek, you know, he was still playing the role of of the Air Force wanted him to squash these stories. And he said, I'm sorry, we, we think that what they saw was swamp gas. And Gerald Ford said, excuse me, I didn't have all these different constituency swamp gas. So sorry. Yeah. The con <laughs> report and all that. Yeah. Yes. Condon yeah. report. Yeah. So let's go to uh, Sean Blakely. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't think that this many people had seen it. And I really didn't know exactly what was going on until a year later when, uh, there was some kind of documentary on TV, and he mentioned it. And I was like, "Wow, that, you know, that's it." So it was, you know, kind of, uh, you know, kind of a relief that I wasn't the only one who had seen it, and, and especially when it was. I, I think they they had a number. It, it, I mean, it was in the thousands of people that had seen it and reported yeah. it. So it through a like a ten year period, you know. So it's, uh, you know, it, it, it's kind of. Again, everybody had seen it. Was uh, at least it wasn't the only one. And Sean, you didn't talk about it either. I, I, I probably did. I mean, you know, I, I don't remember you telling me. Well, I tell you everything. You were, <laughs> you were too busy yelling at me over something, or I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Yeah, gym class, like uh, playing volleyball. But yeah, no, I, I mean, I didn't. I mean, I didn't tell a whole lot of people, you know, because again, you don't want to. You don't yeah. want to nut job. <laughs> old, so you know it's not exactly you know believable. You know, it, it, but it was is it quite... something that you put out of your mind like immediately, like Mark, when you said that you just like after you're doing your checklist of like it's not this, it's not this, it's not this. Then do you just like okay, I don't know what it was, and that's the end of it? No, it's still. I mean, I remembered it. You know. uh, to this day, you know, I remember it distinctly, you know, remember everything, it was immense, it made no sound, and it made a lateral movement, and then it exponentially took off, like sped up and was gone, and uh, there was nothing, I, and that kind of just ran with me, those are the things that I remember the most about it, and then the yeah. fact that I wasn't the only one, um, but it was still kind of difficult difficult to say that uh, that it could be out of the realm of Earth. You know that was that was right. the, that was the kicker for me. Yeah, and um, and it's a little easier to kind of like just brush against that thought a little more now than it was ever back then because uh, you know we were uh, you know uh, people are made to be stigmatized about it and everybody's ever watched television has seen. I used to be a pilot. I used to be a this. And now, uh, you know, I'm, I'm boozing it up in the corner and I don't work. I don't, you know, there's all these sad stories about people yeah. that said something about it. And um, I didn't want to be one of them. I just wanted to kind of rationalize it, you know? Right, right. 
And the I Facebook also, user is saying that it was Danny O'Brien. He's Danny yeah, no, O'Brien. No, Dan, Danny is saying that he is Facebook he, user, and he's saying yeah. that he worked at and that, he worked that at the gas, gas station, station as well. Yeah, he wasn't there so, that day. Okay. Okay. So, Danny, apparently you weren't there that day. He definitely <laughs> worked, but I don't remember seeing you that day. <clears throat> uh, but, yeah, I, I also didn't tell my mother uh, or my father. Um, I don't know if I've ever – I think I've told my father now, but – for 30 years or so i mean i didn't i didn't talk about it so this is not not all that uncommon he said i was late <laughs> you're late to work danny um <laughs> but um <laughs> let's go to um parting shots did we did we go to sean we didn't go to uh audrey oh okay well it was great to see everyone um i just know that if i hadn't seen this thing with my own eyes i probably would be very skeptical and not believe in it uh, I just know it was the early 80s, and I'm pretty sure we didn't have the technology back then for this huge object to fly uh, with no noise. And um, I still don't think we have the technology today. If we do have it, why is our government not using it? I would I would bet my life on it. In fact, uh, physicists have said just in, in David Fravers' encounter where this craft went from so the you know the Nimitz, uh, not the Nimitz, but the um, Aegis cruiser that they had in that carrier group saw it go from fifty feet up to eighty thousand feet um, in in just like a split second, and they said the amount of energy that it it would take to propel a craft at that mm -hmm. speed would be like um, th the energy of the entire Earth. So um, there's another thing is that um, this was just last week. Somebody approached uh, Dave Fravor and tried to tell him that this could, what he saw in the Tic Tac could have been an advanced aircraft. Not only because of the maneuvers that he saw it do, not only because it physically disappeared. I mean, I interviewed his, co his wingman. I interviewed Alex Dietrich, one of the worst interviews that I've ever done in my life. And we hated each other after the interview. But I did interview her and she said she said that when Dave Fravor pointed, you know, pointed the nose of his aircraft at that tic tac, it I said, did it just zoom by the cockpit or did it disappear? She said it disappeared and then appeared at their cap point. So somebody approached Dave Fravor just recently, as reported by Jeremy Corbell, and said, Hey, you know, what you're seeing, that is this advanced uh, aircraft kind of thing. He like said, a yeah, you know, of the Aurora, right? I don't know what they. No, it wasn't the Aurora. I don't know what what it was. He said, "What you're seeing could have been a, a was our technology or something." He said, "If you knew what job I had right now, you wouldn't have you wouldn't say that to me." So that's Dave Fravor. Okay, so <laughs> um, it it unfortunately it we still don't have that kind of technology. And if somebody you know if, to the debunker crowd out there that says we do, and it could be a Russian or a Chinese, or I'll bet my life against yours that it's not. Because I know enough about powered flight to know that what these things are doing, we can't do. Um, and if somebody wants to take me up on that bet, I'll I'll bet anything that I have on that. I bet the house. Um, that's how sure I am. I'm not saying you have to be sure because I'm sure. I'm just telling mm -hmm. you how sure I am. KQ, parting shots. Um. I'd like to thank everybody for coming on tonight. Um, I'll be sleeping with the lights on. <laughs> covers over my head and I await the nightmares <laughs> and now I want to hear what our non-believer <laughs> take it away Stu well I, I also want to thank everybody for coming on and sharing their their, their eerily similar uh, stories um, I all I believe you all saw something absolutely um, I'm not doubting that for a second what it was I guess you know difficult to say um, am I convinced that there is, you know, UFOs flying around? Uh, not yet, but I will be paying attention to the skies. I will be looking more. I will be trying to pay more attention. And hopefully I will see something that, uh, changes my mind. I, I also want to say, and I think all these witnesses here would agree with me. We also don't know what they saw. Yeah. That, that, I think that's the point. Mm -hmm. If we knew what it was, then we could say, okay, I know what this is. The problem is that we're not being able, we're not able to attach a prosaic 
explanation to what they saw. That's the problem. I don't know what they saw. I just know what it is. I know what it isn't, but I don't know what it is. Does that make more sense, Stu? Uh, it absolutely does. Absolutely. Everybody is now intrigued. They want to know what they saw. They uh, are a little scared, a little confused. Uh, I get it. And uh, like I said, I, I hopefully, I hope that one day that there is solid proof. Like there is something that uh, that uh, they'll show on television of something landing or something, you know, flying that's that's very visible and uh, and then the, we can understand that maybe there is something out there. Or if it's not, what is it that, that's, that's happening? You know, scared and confused kind of describes how when you would ask a girl out in high school, what the reaction would be. <laughs> for, for them. Yeah. So, yes, pretty much. <laughs> so, um, so apropos. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, Jeremy Corbell said the other day, if you guys don't know who he is, Jeremy Corbell is an investigative journalist under George Knapp. He uh, did a documentary about Bob Lazar, et cetera, et cetera. And he said the other day he was asked by, if you guys know Payne Lindsay, uh, the, basically he does uh, missing persons cases. He investigates. Uh, to what we're doing. Oh, my God. Stu and his camera just fell. The camera fell. Sorry. And Payne Lindsay said to him, um, he said, Jeremy, uh, why should we believe you? You know, basically. And he said, I'm not asking anybody to believe anything. He said, because of I have direct personal knowledge of these programs and, and these craft direct, I don't have the luxury of disbelief. So that's, Ooh. you know, I'm not saying, again, I'm not saying you need to attach that to your own value system, but um, I, I believe enough people trust Jeremy. David Grush stayed at Jeremy's house a year before he ever came out and spoke with publicly but because people know when you talk to jeremy corbell if you tell him this is secret you don't tell anybody he doesn't hey mark i'm sorry we lost you buddy come on back um Thanks, anyway i want i want to echo the sentiments of everybody i want to thank you mark uh sean audrey merle and uh paul davis from uh, dialing in it is such an honor and pleasure to do this show uh for our hometown uh, is what this is all about is for our hometown and and our school and I'm extremely proud to be associated with, with all of you except Stuart. So, uh, <laughs> I'm just Stu, you're, <laughs> <Terrible. laughs> so, you're, you're, you're out. Terrible. Stu, you're out. Sean, you're in. <laughs> I love you guys. So uh, please give us a like and a subscribe. This should pop up on your podcast feed tomorrow. I will get this up on the web, but we are on YouTube. And uh, thank you, everybody. Hen Hud community. We love you. And on behalf of uh, Audrey, Paul, um, Stuart, Mark, KQ, and uh, and the Merle, the Merle of Hen Hud, mm -hmm. this is Dave San Marco saying peace out, one love. We'll see you down the road. And as always, we're wondering what's up around the bend. Catch you guys Bye later. Guys. Great. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, guys. Good night. Bye. Good, Good seeing night. you. Good night. Good night. Good night.